In a nutshell, everything is a result of me kind of pulling from those ideas and trying to find other ways of expressing other sort of visual metaphors. Uh, the structure in here, uh, the idea was that I wanted to create a structure that was kind of in the process of becoming, that wasn't quite finished, but was sort of you know, perpetually becoming. But it was also, I wanted to make it almost like a path as opposed to just like a room so that it's almost analogous with like sort of transitions that you make in life and almost like a pathway that you walk through in life. And so that was the idea of kind of making it like a spiral, so it kind of like winds in on itself. Um, like, you know, they, how they say time sort of winds around in on itself. Um, and then the framing obviously left undone to sort of just capture the idea again of like something in construction. Uh, the grass, the idea of that was that I wanted it to, I wanted, I like natural elements, I like natural living things or things that kind of have like a certain life to them. And so the grass, I wanted something that would sort of into the idea of something living that has like a certain lifespan and that dies. And also I thought it was kind of cool to just visualize the idea of this path like kind of cutting through the grass and sort of reinforcing the idea of it being like a structure in the middle. So for me, um, you know, watching a child play with building blocks becomes an analogy for, you know, creation in general and for um, possibly larger types of, not just necessarily uh, physical creation, you know, he could grow up and be an architect and build huge, build, huge buildings out of, you know, girders and, and steel and that sort of thing, but also just the idea of structure and, and um, construction in life in general. Uh, so that was where the clay, which, I think, again, for me, the idea of the clay was that it's a kind of like a sort of primal um, substance, you know, it's like in some, uh, I think in Christianity and I think in some other religions, the I, you know, they say that the first people were fashioned out of clay and were actually like vessels in a sense that souls were endowed to, and so that was kind of where the clay and, the, and even the brown color of the, um, of the machines came from, that idea of like dirt and, and things being sort of created from dirt in a sense. And the blocks are just like a very simple, you know, way of constructing like buildings or something of that nature. And so um, that's where all that all that kind of ties in. And, um, it's pretty much in a nutshell. I mean, a lot of it is is uh, stuff that I thought out quite a bit, and then a lot of it is somewhat intuitive, which I always think is you know the best way, uh, at least for me, to make work is to sort of balance out the really analytical with the intuitive, and um, you know, sort of find a happy Place so, that's it. Um, and I mean, I there's hey, you guys can feel free to ask me like any questions you want because there's a lot of stuff that I mean. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think you see a lot of the animals. Like, um, is there significance for um, which Well, originally when I started first sort of working in the style, I was I had like um, you know specific sort of 
identified the issues for each of the animals. But um, along the way, uh, one of the things uh, one of the things that I've been pushing for in terms of development of our work is to have it be more and more ambiguous. Um, in other words, for there to be less uh, sort of specific things that I'm giving you um, with the with the ideas. Uh, so along the way, they really became kind of irrelevant as to like what they specifically sort of symbolize. You know, whether you know somebody is you know like a jackass or pig-headed or something like that. I, it, there's so many. What I found was from looking at um, one of the things that influenced me in the first place was the, the history of anthropomorphic uh, figures in a lot of indigenous cultures, especially like African culture. But really, in, you know, most cultures you go around the world, indigenous cultures have used um, anthropomorphic figures somehow to symbolize something about um, people's personalities or uh, gods or you know natural uh, phenomena or something of that nature. Um, but one of the things you find is that as a result of that, that great history of that, there are a lot of different uh, interpretations as to what each animal means, you know, um, just like colors, you know, it's hard to use colors for a specific reason when you can find out that in some cultures red may mean one thing and red may mean another in another culture. Um, and the same thing with the anthropomorphized animals and animals in general, you know, like for instance, you know, a lot of people when they find out uh, what year they were born in by the Chinese calendar, it's like, oh man, I'm like the year of the rat, you know, it's like, oh, I'm the year of the pig, that sucks, you know, but it's like, it's not, it doesn't transfer over, so um, I, I really aim for more of an ambiguity where the actual animals don't matter. They simply stand in as surrogates for actual people. Um, the original idea was, and the reason why I started using them was that I wanted to originally be able to talk about life. Um, prior to doing this type of work, my work was more influenced by surrealism and um, symbology. And uh, I, I wanted, at a point, I decided that I, I wanted to deal with, with just actual life, with just mundane, you know, that you familiarize yourself with, uh, you know, all of the arts organizations in Atlanta, or whatever city it is you're, you're trying to start, you know, and, and get to know people. I mean, a big part of this is, is the social part of it. And, and um, you know, and a lot of people hate that. A lot of people hate to hear that, you know, you just want to make your work, you just want to be free to do your work, and why do you have to play the games and the politics and all that? Well, you know, I tell people that art, you know, when they say art imitates life, it's like it's true. Politics plays a part in every aspect of life, and it plays a part in art as well. Um, and so you have to get out there and just talk to people, tell them what you're doing. Feel like your work is strong, and you feel like you're ready to start showing your work. Well, then you know, let people know art is is should be like writing and reading. Everybody should be able to draw. It's just that within our society and our culture, it's not it's it's not something which is taught on a wide scale level. And so, generally, the people who have a certain proclivity for making vi for visually expressing themselves are the ones who were singled out as being artists. And in some ways, that's actually advantageous to people like me because it makes it more of a specialized thing. So I can look like I'm more special than what I actually believe I am. I actually believe that everybody should be able to do the same sort of thing if they work hard. If you work hard enough at it, I believe that everybody has a good hard work inside of it. You know? Um, so the reality is, is that you, know, you have to like kind of make people believe that you're actually you know, something sort of special. Can you talk some about your source of inspiration? Is it your past life experiences? A lot of your work seems to have psycholog a lot of psychology in there. Um, well, my source of inspiration is just life, people. You know, um, my, my major in college was psychology. I don't have a, a degree in art. Um, I pretty much have just been painting and drawing my whole life um, and just making art. My family was really, uh, really encouraged me to make art when I was a kid. That was kind of like the thing that I did. Um, I wasn't really big into sports when I was younger, um, and I was kind of, I was kind of a little pudgy kid, little fat kid. And so I used to make art a lot. And, and I think I've just always been fascinated by people and their behavior, and that was what led me into psychology. Um, and then I just kind of, the two kind of came together, I guess, at a certain point. And so. Really, that's my inspiration, is just life in general, just people in general. Um, I'm just fascinated by people and our behavior and the way we think and the way we react to things. Um, 
you know, the, our, our mm -hmm. cognitive structures, I think, fascinate me. The way that each of our brains are wired um, differently, you know, that there's so much, um, you know, there's so many similarities, but then there's so much room for, you know, individual differences as well. And that's part of, again, why, I, like I said, I try to set up a real ambiguity in the work is because it, part of, again, I'm fascinated by these situations that I depict, but I'm also just as fascinated by how they're interpreted by the audience. That is, for me, becomes part of the work, is that sort of interactive part of it. And again, that was kind of where the idea for the tables with the clay and the blocks came, is that I, you know, I like seeing how people respond to certain stimuli um, and what. Do you, what's your, um, what's your work ethic? How do you, what do you do, do you go to the studio every day? Do you put in X I mean, do you have a, a you know, kind of a regimented thing? Like a schedule? You know, yeah, what do you do on the days when you don't feel like working, but you know you should? Oh, I do. <laughs> you just do it. Yeah, um, you know, that's the thing. I mean, again, you know, getting back, you know, as, as, as you know, I mean, you just, uh, there's, you know, it's like, I don't have a schedule. I'm, I'm bad about schedule. <laughs> that's, again, why I, I like my life, because I'm just really bad with, like, being at a certain place by a certain time. But I, I'm in the studio every day, and, and if I'm not in the studio, it's only because I'm doing something else, like I'm out of town lecturing, or I'm at a show, or I'm working on a project like this, or I'm somewhere working on some prints or something of that nature. But, I, but every day, um, aside from like the days when I'm spending with like my family during the day, every day there's something um, that I'm doing related to my work. Um, and even when I'm not, and, and I think this is one of the beauty, beautiful things about being an artist, um, and it's also one of the things that I think is most misunderstood by people, is that one of the beautiful things about art is that so much of it has to do with the concepts that you're developing, that you can work without being in the studio, you can work without being in front of your materials. And I think people don't always understand that, both artists and people who aren't artists. And artists, because we oftentimes feel like, okay, if I'm not in the studio, then I'm not getting anything done. You know, I haven't been to the studio, gosh, you know. And we don't think enough about our work when we're not in front of it, which um, I remember reading something years ago where they were saying how um, thinking about something is almost the same as actually doing it in terms of the way that your body and your physiology interprets it. So there is a very like physical aspect to making work, which requires you know the hand-eye coordination to tr to transmit you know what you want to do to your hands. That's what most people are not. That's where most people fail, and that's why like they talk about at I think in the second grade is where most people like give up on making artwork because they can't make it look the way they want. Well, I think that's because that you get to that point where in order to refine what you're doing, you have to really develop that hand-eye coordination that allows you to you know, specifically do the things that you're thinking about. And so I read somewhere that if you think about doing those things, it's actually training yourself in the same way as if you were actually doing them. And so a lot of your time should be spent you know, in, in thought as well. And I say it's misunderstood by people who aren't artists as well because they'll say something like, oh man, your life must be great. You just, oh, you just go to the studio and hang out. This is so cool. This is all. Oh. But I'm like, well, really, it's like, you know, for me, like I said, the minute I wake up in the morning, the first thing that pops into my head is about my work. And it's just like, from there, it's just like all day. And at night, the minute I, from <laughs> until I fall asleep, it's like I'm thinking about, and, and it gets annoying, like I said, it can get very annoying, but personally, I don't see any other way to do it. Um, I sometimes, in terms of work, I'm extremely, my work is extremely personal to me. Um, it's an extremely spiritual thing when I'm in my studio by myself. But in order for me to have that time, I have, you have to deal with all the realities of the world and, and what you have to do as an artist. And so in terms of, again, that work ethic, that means that when you don't feel like being in the studio, or if you, you know, are just experiencing, you know, this place where, you know, you just feel like you can't work or whatever, you gotta work through that. I mean, I have friends who are like, yeah, you know, I just, I don't know, I just haven't been in the studio because I just, I'm, you know, I'm just not. And I'm like, and they're like, what do you do? And I'm like, I, I go to work. I work through it. I'm like, it may not be as fun at that time as it is other times when I'm really like, yeah. 
but uh, you know, that's just, I do it. I go in the studio, if I don't feel like it, I force myself to be there. I may not be as productive, um, but I just, I don't see where I have enough space to just not do. You know, I don't see where I have enough space to just like, you know, not create anything or not be thinking about it in any way for some time. Um, so, you know, whenever I have those artist blocks or that sort of thing, I just work through it, um, you know, to the best of my ability. And I look at it in overall sense. Um, again, for me, it's a very competitive thing. So I look in the sense of like martial arts or something like that. It's like, you know, I'm training myself to be strong, you know. So if I can work through, when I feel like I'm having, you know, a, a dead sort of period or a block or something, I feel like if I can make myself work through that, then it's in a sense like strengthening, you know, my abilities, you know, and it makes me stronger. And so when I get over that block, I'll be even, you know, stronger. I mean, when I was working on this, I was having blocks. Were, I mean, I, I threw a disc out of my back. I was like, there were a lot of days when I just, I really didn't, you know, they can tell you, I was like coming in here like looking all mad and like, you know, I gotta do this, you know, but you just do it, you know, and, and you know, you try to work through it and make the best of it and, and just, you know, um, push yourself. How do you, I mean, do you have a, how, how hard a time do you have balancing that, like thinking about it all the time and focusing so much on it, how hard a time do you have balancing that with home life or like family life, like um, cleaning and cooking and oh, right, getting everything right, done, like the normal stuff. It's getting easier for me now um, because what's happening is is that I'm I'm getting to a point um, in my career where you know I've put in like a lot of work and I'm starting it's starting I'm starting to have more time for myself where I don't have to think about it as much. I don't you know I'm I'm not I told you I don't think about twenty hours a day. I kind of think about more like eighteen hours a day. <laughs> but in the beginning, like four or five years ago, it was all I thought about. And I had a very difficult time. I was, I, I would go to bed every night with like migraine headaches um, because I was so, I was so like intense about wanting this. Um, and again, I just don't see how, you know, you could, it could happen without having, I mean, I, I thought about it constantly. I had a really hard time balancing them all out. Um, you know, again, I used to go, I, every night I would have like migraine headaches going to sleep. I was very depressed a lot of times because I didn't understand, you know, what I wasn't doing right in a particular situation or how to make this, you know, there were no, I didn't have, there's no guidebook, you know, and it's like, so, I, you know, I used to have a very difficult time. It's getting a lot easier for me, um, but it's still, it can be very hard. I don't have much of a social life. I don't have a lot of friends. I have my family, I might have two kids, my wife, and mostly I'm in the studio, you know, if I'm not at home, I'm in the studio. I mean, but... Well, I was just going to ask you, what, what kind of things does your wife do to make it easier for you, or, or was there any advice you could give to a spouse that is married or involved in an aspiring artist as uh, far as, uh, yeah, is there a help for them? Right, right. <laughs> she needs it. She probably needs it. I mean, it's gotten easier for her, too, because I get, in the beginning, I mean, I used to be, I mean, I've ruined some relationships as a result of what I do and um, the intensity I have. and. Uh, the relationship I was in right before I was with my wife, I mean, it, I think it ended in a lot of ways because I was very unattentive. I was just not there. I was always thinking about her. And like I said, that was about five years ago or so. And, you know, and so I sometimes apologize to that person now. Like, I'm like, you know, I realized that I was just not there. You know, I was not really thinking about you at all. I was just thinking about the work. I mean, I, the best thing I can say is to understand, you know, is to just be understanding. Because you know this is this person's passion, you know, and fighting against it is only going to make it worse for both of you. So I would just say, if you really love that person, you just got to be understanding and.